What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the good, bad, and the ugly on the Emancipator Exosuit. The latest mech stratagem that we've gotten available inside of Helldivers 2 and one that I know a lot of people were probably pretty excited about. I was myself and I thought this would be pretty powerful against the automatons but sadly enough after extensive testing with this on both the automaton side and the terminate side I've come to the conclusion that this stratagem is far less fun than I thought it would be and overall the best way to describe it is unimpactful. As the biggest issue that I found with the Emancipator is its overall damage output and just about every time that I deployed this within any given match it just did not have a major impact on the overall match itself. It would be a very short-lived experience even if I did have fun here and there and there would be short-lived usefulness. In general it just felt as though it would take out a handful of enemies whether they be from medium to heavily armored targets. And I know that with a stratagem like this where you are focused on taking out medium to heavily armored targets you are going to have a lower amount of kills that you'll be getting out of this stratagem but with a stratagem that only has two uses a 10 minute cooldown and not something that you can just go and pick up later on or even refill the ammo on it does need to feel impactful when you do use it and it does need to feel powerful which right now there are more than a few instances of where it feels as though I am basically slinging wet noodles and some targets just feel like they are a bullet sponge which we'll get into those details here shortly and overall I believe the major reason that this is happening is we've seen this growing trend seem to happen with whoever on the balancing team is focusing the capabilities of some of these stratagems and I'm all for team dynamics and group team play focused balancing but overall right now I feel like it is completely overtuned to the point where there are stratagems, primary weapons and overall gameplay loops that are suffering because they are overtuning this balance towards this group dynamic type of gameplay. So much so to the point that even group dynamic gameplay can feel unfun at certain times. And the reality is is that they need to understand that a large portion of the player base is simply put going to be a ragtag team that is grouped up based on jumping into SOS matches similar to me that I mean pretty much 90% of my 700 hours plus of playing this game has been just jumping into SOS matches joining up with other people and 9 times out of 10 in those moments I will have zero voice communication. There'll be a little bit of text chat here and there but generally non verbal cues is how I'm going to base all of my team coordinated gameplay off of and a lot of times it can work but there are definitely more than a few stratagem combinations or stratagems and primary weapons that end up suffering because this balance has been so focused on like this elite group of super tactical type of gameplay that obviously should be praised and rewarded for those players that do end up having that type of synergistic teamwork going on but in general it still needs to be fun and balanced around the simple fact that not everyone is going to know each other not everyone's going to have that voice communication and overall a lot of these stratagems that do end up having few uses like this one where we only get two times to call this in at two separate moments during the entire match they need to be able to come in and carry their own weight every time that you use them especially when facing off with something like the automatons when you can literally call this thing in and one cannon turret is going to cause this thing to blow up there's nothing worse than feeling like you came in with a wasted slot of a stratagem especially if you've had one of those modifiers that already took away one of your stratagem slots in the first place but that's my personal opinion. Let me know how you feel about it down in the comments below. We're all basically waiting on that upcoming patch to determine whether or not this is going to be something that we're going to want to continue playing. And I, I'm definitely on the same boat with a lot of people in that same type of thinking. And I know a lot of people have already jumped ship waiting for some new additional content to come in that makes the game feel a little bit more fresh. Because over the past month it has felt like it has been filler major order after filler major order time and time again with nothing really feeling like it's been progressing up until most recent. But that being said, let's jump down to the details and get into the good, bad, and the ugly. Starting off with the good. Now the number one good thing about the Emancipator is going to be the fact that its rounds do have penetrative capabilities towards heavy armor, but specifically certain heavy armor on certain enemy types. Including the Charger's leg, the Charger's head, as well as the Bile Titan's head. On top of that, we also have the capability of penetrating the entire body of the Hulk, as well as the front armor plates of the laser tank. Anything else that has heavy armor, we will not be able to penetrate through. Including the back of the Bile Titan, sadly enough. But it will be able to take out the laser tanks quite easily. Now there are only two other good things about the Emancipator, and that is going to be taking down a Charger and taking down a Hulk. But we'll start with the Charger. Now the best way to take down a charger with the Emancipator is to focus both of the auto cannons on one of the legs and within 9 to 10 shots you should be able to take it out fairly quickly. It's actually quite fast and it's pretty effective. You can take out a group of them 
pretty quickly, and it's probably the best aspect of the Emancipator when facing off with the Terminator. From that point, though, it does go downhill, but overall, when it comes to just facing off with the Chargers, the Emancipator does make quick work of them. But for whatever reason, if you aim for the face, it will end up taking 15 shots, so don't waste your round as it will be a little bit irritating to also land all 15 of those into its face as you will need to directly hit the forehead and make sure that none of the shots dip underneath towards the chin or mouth of the Charger. Beyond that, when it comes to taking down Hulks, the Emancipator does actually quite well. It's quite strange that these two specific enemies are where the Emancipator really shines, even though it should be dealing with medium-type enemies a lot better than it does, but we'll get to that a little bit later when we get to the ugly. When it comes down to facing off with Hulks, though, from any distance and from any portion of the body that you land a shot, you will be able to stagger the Hulk, which is amazing, because not much is actually staggering Hulks anymore other than a stun grenade, some stratagems, or maybe even a rocket to the face. Beyond that, you will also be able to two-shot the Hulk if you're capable of landing those two shots in the center faceplate, which isn't going to be easy with the Emancipator. The accuracy is not that great, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But if you're up close and you start aiming for the center mass, you can take out some of these Hulks pretty quickly, and this is going to be one of the fun factors if you can land those shots properly. But at a distance, if you're just landing shots to anywhere on the body besides that center faceplate, it will take up to 15 shots in order to take down one Hulk. Beyond that, it doesn't do too bad when it comes to taking down Devastators, but accuracy becomes the problem. But that being said, let's now get into the bad of the Emancipator. Now the number one bad thing about the Emancipator is its overall accuracy. We will have that little circular crosshair that we have with any other weapon inside of the game when it comes to third person perspective, but this ends up being a little bit problematic with this Emancipator as we will be trying to land precision shots from a distance with that circular little reticle and it is not going to be the easiest thing and it just will not feel pinpoint whatsoever especially when dealing with something like Devastators or trying to take on one of those Hulks at a distance and trying to conserve on ammo rather than spending 15 shots. You know, you'd like to just get those two shots on the faceplate, but it won't be that easy with the reticle we have available to us. And for whatever reason, the left arm doesn't always sync up with the reticle with the right arm. It seems to have its own crosshair available at certain times and just shooting in completely different directions, which is just terrible for this considering... We already have so much ammo with this, and so little uses of it, it can be really frustrating to just be wasting ammo in certain instances based on the left arm just going AWOL. And something I'd like to see in the coming future is possibly the addition of a first-person perspective while in the mech. Not only would this be something that would be really interesting and cool and just overall add to the immersion value of the mech itself, but for something like the Emancipator, having that precision crosshair with that available for us, especially if it just kind of narrowed us in, we didn't get that third person perspective, couldn't really see off to the left or right. You know, it'd be one of those moments where cut back on a bit of our field of view, but be able to actually land every single one of the shots we have available to us when it comes to the auto cannon arms we have with this mech. Now coming up right after that, we've got the next bad thing, which is going to be the moment in which a Bile Titan just feels like a massive bullet sponge. Now there are certain times where a Bile Titan can feel like a bullet sponge, but it's honestly not that much of a time sink when it comes to other stratagems or support weapons. But with the Emancipator, it ends up being one of those moments where yes, you can take down a Bile Titan, but it's going to take 50 rounds to the forehead of this Bile Titan in order to take it down which is an unreal amount of rounds to put into the forehead, and more than likely you're going to burn a bit more than that just trying to nail that forehead directly, as if it pukes, its forehead goes back into its body, you may not hit it, you may not get enough damage on it, or you may miss in certain shots, as this is going to take some time, and more than likely you're going to be backpedaling, if not trying to hit it from an angle, and ending up hitting some of its legs, which are pretty much the most deadly thing in the game, dead or alive. But besides the point, I feel as though it is just far too many rounds required to take this Bile Titan down. It really does feel like a massive bullet sponge moment. It's uninteresting. It's very boring. I would prefer if it was just 20 rounds or to just shake things up a bit, make it a little bit more on the tactical side of things where it possibly had the capability of shooting the back armor itself, being able to blow that off after 10 shots, and then being able to either just put in another 10 shots, maybe even 15 if you just wanted to make it a little bit more bullet spongy but not overly excessive. That way it's about 25 rounds, cuts the time in half, and it feels a bit more interactive in order to take down the Bile Titan. 
but that's my personal opinion on it. You know, it's nice that you can kill it, but 50 rounds is one third of your entire ammo. We only get two uses out of this. And there's some moments where there's three Bile Titans coming out of one Bug Breach. It's absolutely ridiculous how much ammunition you're going to be dropping from just one stratagem that you only get two uses out of one match with. It's a bit overkill on decreasing the total damage output of this thing. And just after that, it will also take an additional 50 rounds to take down the Factory Strider if you're hitting the weak spot specifically, which is going to be on its head with the visor or the optical lens that's on the front, as well as shooting the belly of it, which is ridiculous considering if you shoot an auto cannon support weapon at the belly, it ends up just being 10 shots. So this is quite ridiculous. And on top of that, there's a lot of times where you're not going to be able to get close to the factory strider as if you're at a distance and it still has the cannon on top, that thing's going to one shot you and you do need to be careful in those moments because as soon as it target locks on you and starts turning that barrel towards you, more than likely the best bet that you have available to you is to immediately eject and hope that it doesn't take out your mech as it's going to be an instant one shot and there's no dodge with this thing. If you're not able to get to cover, it's a one and done and it's over. And for whatever reason, you cannot shoot the miniguns underneath the head at all. You, you can't even land a shot on them. I, I have no clue what's going on there. For whatever reason, I, I have wasted so much ammo on that. But again, it's another one of those bullet sponge moments, and I feel like it's a it's pretty excessive and overkill. If I'm directly in the face of a factory strider with explosive rounds hitting the center of its face, I mean, come on, it, it should be about 25 rounds. It shouldn't be 50 going into this. But enough talking about the bullet sponge moments. Let's get down to the ugly. Now, when it comes down to the ugly, the biggest thing that is the most irritating thing to me is the simple fact that the Emancipator's autocannons somehow end up doing half the damage of the autocannon support weapon. And in some cases, it even takes more than double the amount that we would need with the autocannon support weapon to take down certain medium armored type enemies on both sides of the fight. But let's get down to the details and explain why this damage is reduced and given my theory on why they decided to go this route with it. Now starting out first, we've got the Terminate, which we've got the Brood Commander and the Hive Guards, each taking about two shots if you're landing them directly into the face itself. Which for me personally, I feel like it should be one shot if you're getting a direct hit versus both of the faces of these, but that's just me. And there'll be times where if you don't hit the face of the Brood Commander, it could take three, if not four shots. But where it gets really bad is when it comes to the Bloaty Bugs, the orange Nursing Spewer and the medium armored green variant of it, which is the Bile Spewer. Now let's uh, lay out the baseline here, which is going to be the auto cannon support weapon, which both the orange and the green bloaty bug are going to take just two rounds from any direction. Anywhere on the body, the auto cannon's going to kill them in just two shots every single time. But when it comes down to the emancipator, for whatever reason, the auto cannons on this weapon, even if they do have heavy armor penetration, are going to take upwards of three shots every single time just to take out each one of these. And if you're facing off with the green bile spewer variant of it with the medium armor, which is the most frustrating one to deal with, it could take four or more shots at certain given times just to take that thing out. Which is absolutely ridiculous. The Emancipator should be two-shotting each one of these enemy types every single time to make it a much more viable stratagem, and it only gets worse when we go over to the Automaton side of things. Now, starting off with the heavily armored tanks and the cannon turrets that we'll have, you know, strewn across the map that you more than likely have been pretty frustrated with, both of these have a very easy chance to be able to one-shot you from a distance. If they're able to get, you know, any line of sight on you and they start turning towards you, you better make it to some cover pretty quickly because they will be able to destroy you in no time and if you don't have time to make it to some type of cover i would highly suggest ejecting and more than likely that's going to be the end of that mech as they're still going to fire and sadly enough with the emancipators auto cannons actually having an increase to the heavily armored penetration it is not quite high enough to make it through the armor of a heavily armored tank or the cannon turrets that we'll find across the map so in those moments, we will still need to aim for the weak spot on the back, the little yellow vent that's back there. And this is another one of those medium armor protected weak spots. So again, we find ourselves in a situation where the auto cannon can get this done in three shots from the support weapon. But when it comes down to the emancipator, it's going to be six to seven shots in order to just take this thing down. 
Which for me personally, if you're going to further increase the overall damage that's needed to take down one of these targets from comparison to the auto cannon support weapon, but you're going to have more heavy armor penetration, I think I should be able to fire from any direction at one of these heavily armored tanks or these cannon turrets with this stratagem specifically in order to destroy them. I wouldn't mind six to seven shots if I could get it done from any angle against either one of these targets. Now, the thing that just also doesn't make sense to me is the simple fact that emplacements are also going to take six to seven shots. Anything that is the anti-aircraft, the mortars, or the turrets that are up on top of any one of those command bunkers, for whatever reason, these are going to take six to seven shots. And with the autocannon support weapon, yet again, it's another one of those moments where, with just three shots from any angle, I can take these out from a distance. And more than likely, I, I just do not understand why I'm having situations where I'm having to end up spending more of my ammo with a stratagem. I can't reload. I get two call-ins and a 10-minute cooldown. And that's going to be the real ugly part is the simple fact that the autocannon support weapon really outclasses this stratagem in just about every way. And I just do not understand why they would make the decision to make it less powerful than the autocannon support weapon. I mean, it's got four of these weapons on it. Why we didn't put in the autocannon sentry barrels onto this mech is still beyond me. That would have been a much more fun mech that would have made this way more impactful. And overall, every time I would use this, it would more than likely be something that would be absolutely devastating. Give me the capability of two-shotting devastators. Give me the capability of being able to literally chew through hulks and at least six to seven shots. Give me that capability of getting those six to seven shots on heavily armored tanks, cannon turrets. Let me just blow everything away with this. Give me a little bit of a higher kill count with this thing, a bit of a higher damage to it, and overall, it's going to end up being much more impactful in every single match. But as far as the reason to why I think they actually ended up doing this was the simple fact that they're probably making some argument about the simple fact of it shoots faster, it doesn't have to reload, you know, you've got the mobility factor and you've got a little bit of shielding with the fact that it's, you know, air quotations, heavily armored, even though it can still get blown up quite easily. And there's so many different instances where it can absolutely get just one shot or when it gets called in, sometimes it just blows up before it even lands on the ground. Nothing more frustrating than that moment. But to top it all off, when it comes down to the ugly, it also cannot even aim downward. So anytime that you have the high ground with this mech, you're going to end up in a situation where if you're trying to hit any enemy within 50 to 100 meters that are directly below you, you more than likely cannot aim down to even land those shots on them. It's a little bit strange. There are some moments where you have a little bit of frustration trying to aim up, but it's much easier. But anything that is below you is more than likely going to be outside of your range of attack. So you are going to want to make sure that you are at least on level ground, if not below some of your enemies, in order to be able to land the shots from this weapon on them. And... It, for whatever reason, will allow you to aim the crosshair all the way down, so do be mindful of this. You may find yourself in situations of just straight-up wasting ammo, which is extremely frustrating. But that's going to be the good, bad, and the ugly on the Emancipator Exosuit. You know, it's, it's one that ends up just feeling less impactful than the Patriot Exosuit, especially when facing off with the Terminid. I was having very high hopes for this mech coming in, thinking it would actually be good against both sides, especially when I found out it did have some heavy armor penetration to it. And you can use it on either side. I'm definitely going to put together a little meme loadout for this. You can have a little bit of fun with it. But overall, it really is something that I feel is underperforming and does need to increase its overall damage output to truly be something that shines and actually becomes equal with the rest of the other stratagems. Because as for right now, it's one of those where... You're literally just throwing this in for a bit of fun. You're not actually going to be the most impactful with this one. And every time that you use it, it really is just kind of like this short burst of being able to clear through a few enemies or at least a handful of them. And more than likely, it just doesn't feel like it's actually going to be getting through more than maybe one objective or maybe an objective and a half, if that. It just ends up feeling like it falls a little bit flat, but that's my opinion. You know, Let me know how you guys feel down in the comments below. Have you been enjoying this? Has this been something that has felt impactful to you or unimpactful? Maybe there's some things that I missed about it as well. Just let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming daily. And on that note, have a good one.